Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So, would you like to solve some one step equations? Uh, what I have here is a lot of examples. I actually have 12 examples of one step equations. And I tried to, try to grab as many examples of one step equations as I possibly could um, to kind of make a whole video on explaining one step equations. Now, basically, when we're solving one step equations, what our whole purpose is, and our, I was just actually going over this with a student, I was just doing some private tutoring. The whole purpose of solving, you know, how do we know that we came to our answer? We only know we came to our answer when we have our variable is isolated. It means our variable is equal to a value, especially you know for these equations. So when we have a variable equal to a value, we know we're done. If there's any other operations, a distance, subtraction, multiplication, division, um, then the happening to the variable, then we have not completely solved the problem yet. We only have completed the problem. For example, answer number one is completed when x equals a value. So what we're going to do in all one step equations, it's very important to understand what the four operations that are going to be happening to your variable. And that's all we're going to focus on for one step equations. So we have a variable. What can be happening to our variable is we can add a number to it, we can subtract a number to it, we can multiply a number to it, and we can divide um, a number by it. So we, those are your four basic operations. And to isolate the variable, all we're simply going to do is undo those operations. So therefore, that comes into, well, what are inverse operations? How do you undo addition? You undo addition by subtraction. How do you undo subtraction? By using addition. Multiplication and division is the same thing. So I'm going to talk my way through, and let's just kind of go through this. So the main important thing is you want to identify your variable that you're solving for. So um, for, one, for one variable equations, it becomes pretty simple because there's only one variable to solve for. In this first example here, I just have x. So if I want to solve for x, I need to see, well, what is happening to my variable? What operation is being applied to it that I need to undo? And you can see here I have x is being added by 4. So x plus 4 equals 11. So therefore, to get x by itself, I need to undo adding 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4. But remember equations. This is one of the big things we have about equations. Equations are equal to each other, so we have to use what we call the properties of equality. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do on the other side. All right. Now, what happens when we add and subtract on the same side? Well, if you have 4 minus 4, that becomes, and I'm not going to do this for every problem. I'll just kind of show it for the first two here. This becomes x plus 0 equals 11 minus 4 is 7. Well, x plus 0 is just x equals 7. So now you can see that my variable, actually, let's write the answer in red. Now you can see that my variable is isolated. And then, so by using my inverse operations with adding and subtracting, what I do is I obtain 0, which 0 allows me to identify my variable x. So in this case, let's go and see. All right, well, let's play a game. That's good. So let's see what's happening to my variable. My variable is x. My x is now being subtracted by 5. So to undo subtracting by 5, I need to add 5 to both sides. When doing that, I obtain x plus 0 um, equals, or I could just write x equals negative 2 plus 5 is going to be a positive 3. All right. Um, here, you can see my x is being added by 2. So I'm going to subtract the 2 on both sides. I did this problem, though, because a lot of students get mistaken with negatives. Remember, negative is like owing money. So if you owe me $15 and you borrow two more dollars, you now owe me $17. All right. Now, the next two kind of become a little tricky because a lot of students will say, oh, well, you know, what are you doing? Are you adding or are you subtracting? So the best thing to do when you're trying to identify is always write your variable in front. So in this case, I can rewrite this as y. That's a negative 7. So I could say plus a negative 7 equals 3. Or y equals plus a negative is the same thing as saying y minus 7 equals 3. Right? It's exactly the same thing. So what I want you to understand is all three of these equations are equivalent. All right? Um, but now, writing it like this, it's much easier to see, oh, my y is being subtracted by 7. So I need to add a 7 to both sides. And my final answer is y equals 10. Over here, if I rewrite this, I have x plus 7. Notice that's a positive 7 here. That equals 1. So now to solve, I subtract a 7 on both sides. And I get x equals negative 6. OK, for the next example now, we're kind of done with adding and subtracting, at least. Yep, now we're done with adding and subtracting. 
uh, at least for less for the last example. So now we're going to get into multiplication and division. So again, remember I said you know I talked to them inverse operations. So undo multiplication, you have to divide. To undo division, you have to multiply. So we look at this, we look at our variable, and we say, all right, our variable is being multiplied by three. So to undo multiplication, we're going to divide by three. Now, why does dividing work? Well, basically, three divided by three, that goes to one. So it's one times w equals 36 divided by three, which is 12. Well, one times w is still just going to be w equals 12. So a lot of times, you know, people will say, hey, they cancel out. Well, no, they don't really cancel out. They add, they combine to 0, or they divide to 1. Okay, So they're not really canceling out. It's either they add to 0 or they divide to 1. Um, OK, so now, so we know if we're multiplying by 3, to undo multiplication, you divide. So therefore, here you can see my variable is being divided by 5. So to undo division, you have to multiply. And again, the properties of equality stay true. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. So I'm going to multiply by 5 over here. Now, a lot of students always get confused and say, well, how do you know if the 5 is in the numerator, denominator, and so forth? You're multiplying by 5. 5 is always as like 5 over 1. So you're going to be multiplying the numerator. But when you have a 5 in the numerator and a 5 in the denominator, again, they're going to divide into 1. So therefore, I'm just left with p equals negative 2 times 5, which is a negative 10. Um, and then in this example, you can see I have a negative 4x equals 20. Well, that's negative 4x, so that means negative 4 times x. So to undo that, I'm going to divide by negative 4 on both sides. Negative divided by negative 4 divided by negative 4 is still just going to leave me with x equals a negative 5. Over in this case, again, you have your y divided by negative 10. So you're going to multiply by negative 10. So therefore, I have y equals a negative 70. All right, so now let's get into some fractions, right? Now we're getting into the good stuff. OK, so I was asking the student today, uh, and they're having a little trouble to remember. And she's like, oh, yeah, I actually learned this in sixth grade. And she's going in high school now. Um, but she didn't learn exactly. She learned what I was talking about. She didn't really learn about what I was doing with it or why I was trying to think of it. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the main important thing that we're trying to do, we're trying to either get our variable to add or subtract to 0 or to be multiplied or divided by 1. That's it. That's really the main important thing about one-step um, one equations. We either want our variable to be added or subtracted to 0, so therefore we can isolate it, or we want it multiplied or divided by 1 so we can isolate it. It's ex the same thing. So if we have fractions, we want to be able to get rid of the fractions. So you could say, hey, this is 2 thirds times y. So how do you undo multiplication? You divide, right? You divide on both sides. But even thinking about dividing fractions brings back horrible memories of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions. And people just like, ah, I don't even want to deal with this. So the main important thing that we can think about when fractions, the best way I like to do it is we need to get our fraction to either be added by 0, which we're not going to have. There's no addition or subtraction sign. So we can't do adding and subtracting. But we can look into multiplying. I want my y, I want my 2 thirds to be equal to 1. So there's only one number that we can multiply or divide our, uh, our fraction by, or just multiply our fraction by to get it to be 1. And that number is called its reciprocal. Remember when you flip the numerator and denominator. So what I'm going to do is dividing by 2 thirds is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So if you multiply by the fraction's reciprocal on both sides, that goes to 1. So you're left with y equals. Now, how do you multiply a whole number times a fraction? Well, you convert your whole number to a fraction by just putting it over 1. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. So I have 12 divided by 2, which is just equal to 6. Now, in this example, this is another way to write a fraction. And a lot of students get confused by this. They say, oh, well, this would be a two-step. It's being multiplied and divided. Yes, you're right, but that's exactly what a fraction is. So 7x divided by 2 equals 14 is the same thing as 7 halves x equals 14. So I just want you to understand they're exactly the same. So now, um, what we could do here is multiply by the reciprocal. So I do 2 over 7 times 2 over 7. So that, can't, that goes to 1. So I'm left with x equals. Now again, I'm just going to do this one over my head. 14 times 2 is 28. Divided by 7 is 4. 
OK, now I had to throw in an addition and subtraction one just because you know, I don't know what types of problems you might be dealing with. A lot of students have ones that are a little bit more high intensity with fractions. I could give you an easy fraction problem where they have the same denominators, right? And if you, they have the same denominators, then you would just apply what we've done before. You just add 2 thirds on both sides. And really, that's, you could do that and then just add 2 thirds plus 1 sixth. But the main important thing of what I wanted to get with this problem is, oh, I guess that would become a two-step problem. OK, well, yeah. All right, so let's just do it as a two-step problem. So therefore, I would add it as 2 thirds to both sides. So therefore, I have x equals 1 sixth plus 2 thirds. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to get to add these, you have to have common denominators. So therefore, I have to get 3 and 6. The common denominator between 3 and 6 is 6. So I have to multiply by 2 over 2 on both sides. So therefore, I'm left with x equals 1 sixth plus 4 sixths, which equals 5 sixths. So I thought I'd at least do a fraction one just so you guys can remember. Remember, adding and subtracting, you have to get common denominators. But when you're multiplying, you just multiply straight across. And dividing is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I thought it would be good to review. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you do solve for one-step equations. Thanks.